Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly Dyson Sphere program update. As usual, this channel is sponsored by Trefoil.be, so check them out and I'll talk a bit more about them a bit later, you know, as, the, as is traditional with these sort of videos. So, since the last video, the main thing I've done, I think the most exciting thing I've done, is that I've got the yellow science up and running here. So as you can see, we've got this stack of, um, what do we call it, matrix facilities, all building the, um, the yellow science, except for this one in the middle for some reason. I'm not quite sure why it's not, but um, <clears throat> yeah, in theory they're all built. Oh, it's probably because there's not enough output space and speed down here. So let's upgrade a couple of things. So we'll upgrade that and that. Um, there, there, there we go, maybe. Yeah, it seems to be alright. Okay, so Yes, yeah, so the main, the big thing I've got now is, is we're making yellow science. So that that required me to go off to the other planet, as you saw in the last um, in the last video, and bring back a large quantity of the um, of titanium from there. So on the other planet, I've got a titanium mine set up, and I've got some smelting and so on. I actually went out there and put in a, um, some extra smelting facilities and a load more wind power, wind turbines in order to generate the power for it. So we've now got a decent amount of and then brought back with me a decent amount of titanium so at the moment I'm restricted to actually carrying the stuff around in my mech's inventory like sort of, you know some sort of pack horse but in the future I'm hoping to be able to have some sort of automated system that will carry all this stuff around for me so I've got a stack of three storage containers here that I can fill up with as much titanium as I want to and then along here we with them processing that as required so there are a few steps here. So in order to make the um, the, the the yellow science, you need well let's well let's, let's have a look at the um, yellow science requires uh, diamonds and titanium crystals. Diamonds are actually quite easy. Where have I got them being made? I've forgotten how I'm doing all of this. Ah yes, di di the diamonds coming in over here because it turns out diamonds just require um, a another furnace to take in the carbon and cook it again and that, that's capable of then compressing it down into a um, into a diamond. So we've got we've got the carbon coming in along a belt here, into a couple of furnaces, smelting it down into a into a diamond. Great. So that's brought over here on a belt as usual. The um the other the, the titanium crystals though turned out to be quite a lot more complicated because those require the organic crystals and the titanium. The organic crystals require plastic and refined oil and water and plastic requires refined oil and carbon. Uh, water is fairly straightforward, um, and the ref and, and the plastic. Uh, yeah, so that's so that's all of all of this sort of stuff that, that I've got in here. So this is a simple chain of buildings that are just. I decided to go for direct insertion for these because it's just it's easier, and they they all seem to run at about the same speed. So it was rather than having belts carrying the stuff around, I thought let's just go straight direct insertion, and then see if I regret that later. So we've got the uh, the carbon and the refined oil being brought in along here. Those are being sucked up by these machines and turned into the plastic. The plastic is being passed directly across into the chemical plants here, which are also taking in the refined oil from this belt. So you see the belt is, is feeding both of the both machi machi machines on both sides. And we've got a water pump here that is pulling water out that's going... This is a little bit uh, convoluted, but it's passing it out along this belt along the bottom here, which these two machines are taking. That that's fine. And then I realised that actually I was going to need more of these machines for the throughput I needed. So I've got this splitter here that's taking it in and then passing it out again back in the same direction higher up. So it can then spaghetti its way round this machine and come along here to be fed up, to be fed into these two machines. Because we also need for making the um, oh no we don't sorry we don't need water for, that, for the crystals. Once we've, once we've got the uh, the biological crystals, we can pass those straight across into here, where we also take in the diamonds. Sorry, the titanium that's coming along here, and that makes these um, and that will then make the titanium crystals as you can see are being fed along this belt. Those get grabbed up by this machine, so so the, and then and made it, along with the uh, the diamonds I mentioned earlier get made into science packs. So it's it's fairly straightforward really. It just requires all of these steps. We've got the carbon coming in after being cooked um, from the coal. We've got the oil coming in after coming out, through, out of the processing facility um, to be turned into the refined oil, making the, making the crystals along with the water. So yeah, all of this is, is relatively okay. The only sort of complicated part of it was getting this second water belt or this, this extension to the water belt to come along here. Fortunately, the uh, assembly machines that are making the um, are making the actual uh, titanium crystals are quite a lot smaller than the chemical plants that are making the biological crystals and the plastic. So, the, with a little bit of wiggling, um, it was easy. I was actually able to fit in this pump in between two of these machines, which made it slightly neat and meant I didn't need to have a gap in there. But this now does have potential for me to extend it further. Should I should I need more of these um, titanium crystals for either for um, making these things faster or 
it's quite possible that I'll need the titanium crystals for, for something else and we'll end up having to put them onto the bus and take them away. In which case I'm definitely going to need to have a lot more of these machines making them. Because at the moment these machines are using pretty much the entire supply that's being created. I've also put in an additional belt here to take plastic away because I'm bound to need plastic for other things as well. So again, once again, I can extend this should I feel the need to, although I will have to move this pile on somehow. Um, I can extend the, the belt along from, from along the, the uh, supply of plastic out this way again to make more of it in order to feed other things around the, around the factory. But at the moment, I haven't really bothered with that because I, this is currently the only thing that uses the plastic. So yes, that's got yellow science up and running, and that's meant I can now continue with all of the all of the science that's being done over here. I can carry on because a lot of the um, the later stuff tends to require uh, yellow science. Now the one I'm doing at the moment is relatively unusual because you see this this requires the same number of each of the science packs, so they're ticking down evenly together. Most most more advanced sciences, let's take. Um, this one, for example, requires ten times as many of the blues and the reds as it does of the yellows. So, the yellows aren't being produced as quickly because it takes eight seconds to produce a yellow, six seconds to produce a red, and three seconds to produce a blue. However, because most of the science packs require the them in a very very in, it require the uh, yellows in a much lower quantity. So that planet going past there looked weird. Uh, because they require yellows in much lower quantities, that's absolutely fine. I just need to have enough red and enough blue production in order to keep up with it. And the blue is relatively easy because it's a quicker recipe. The red is, well I've compensated for the red being slower by having two stacks of those. Now in theory to keep up I'd need to have a second, maybe even a third stack of the um, of the yellow science production. But as I say they're required in much lower quantities for most researchers so that's not so much of an issue. <clears throat> So that was one of the big. Th that's the first big thing that I did in the last in the last ep in the last stream. I got the yellow science being produced. Now the other thing I've done is over here in the um, the oil processing area. So so previously, I had a system over here <coughs> where we were producing the where where the oil was being dug up over here. It's being, being I mean, it was being passed into these refineries, and these refineries are doing the recipe where they take in. Um, oil and they produce uh, refi and they produce ref uh, refined oil and hydrogen. I don't know how to check the proportions, but anyway, it was producing both hydrogen and and the refined oil. So at that point, I didn't really have any use for the refined oil. So the refined oil was just going round here and being shoved into these into these big tanks here. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of space been taken up in here. So we've got one a full tank there, a full tank there, and this one's now about 40, just under 40 percent full, so and is going down relatively quickly. And this is going down for two reasons. <clears throat> Firstly, we're taking the oil away to be made into, into plastics and other titanium-y goodnesses over there. Um, so that's using up a fair amount of it. But also, I've got this processing facility along here. And this is a bit like the, uh, the Coverex enrichment systems from, um, from Factorio, in that it takes in a it takes in a thing that you don't it takes in a thing that you don't want and a thing that you do want, and then produces more of the thing that you do want. So this recipe will take in, I think it's two, oh, here we go down here, two, um, two hydrogens and one refined oil, and then spits out three hydrogens and a carbon. And both of those are worse, at least were significantly more useful. So, what I've done along here, and the reason there's so many belts winding through here, is I've set up a system that will, that will provide these refineries, these, these, these things, with as much hydrogen as they need. So we've got this belt along the bottom here, is literally just for the um, for, for the, uh, the these these um, what are they what are they actually called uh, oil oh they all or our oil refineries so it's been passed along here um, and then it stops so this belt is just for that and it's set on this on this splitter over here it's set as the higher priority so I've filtered it filtered off to the bottom so that's the that is the higher priority across the bottom there um, and then you've got one input two outputs and. Yeah, the colour coding, as you can see down here, it's showing showing the ones the higher priority. So they'd be fed down there by choice. <clears throat> but then all of the all of the hydrogen that's created by this is then passed back along this belt along here, where it goes round here and is fed back into this into the in, into the same splitter. So again, it'll feed any all of the, two thirds of the hydrogen presumably will then get fed back along the bottom to to replenish the supply required by the by the system, and then the other third will get passed out along the top. And sent off into the rest of the factory to be turned into science packs and other other things that require the hydrogen. 
So that's 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 great. That's 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 working nicely. It's uh, it's fine. However, in order to make sure I topped up when if there was ever any any sort of drops in the throughput, the original hydrogen produ production over here that was coming in from the original refineries that are taking in the crude oil is being passed in on the side of the belt like this and the reason the belt is this sort of funny shape is to make sure that that goes in on the side um, and therefore this one is the priority but if any if, if there are any, ever any gaps in this there's a gap coming up now will it make yeah there you go then then we'll use a little bit from here just to keep it topped up so we're always guaranteed to have a full belt going into into the bottom of here as long as there's demand for it um, and then that belt will be prioritized first along the bottom and then the and then any overspill will go out along the top so this keeps the whole thing reasonably well balanced and in theory ensures that I'm always using the the, uh, the the hydrogen that's been produced from this process from the from the excess oil that I don't that I didn't need as a priority now at some point in the future I'm going to start to run a bit low on um, on, on the uh, refined oil because it's all going to got turned into plastic or into hydrogen and at that point I'm going to have to rethink how this whole system works um, but for now this is working quite nicely um, and there's still as you can see little bits of uh, refined oil being produced so whenever whenever some of the hydrogen makes it through from the original refineries from here then as they restock themselves they'll spit out a little bit of refined oil that goes back into the system over here so the, the question is what's going to happen when these tanks run out well there are there are a couple of things that are going to happen firstly these machines are going to stop being able to run because they won't have any refined oil so at that point the hydrogen will stop coming out along here and we'll start getting the hydrogen coming through from here instead which means we'll create more refined oil so that's basically okay the only problem with that so so if it was just this system that would be absolutely fine all of it would be nice and balanced and we'd have no problems there at all the potential risk with this is that we're also using the refined oil down here in order to turn it into plastics and biocrystals. So at that point, if, if we do run out of the refined oil here, we may well find that the system is, isn't able to keep, keep enough going out this way in order to keep the system happy. So what I should probably do is put in another splitter like this one with the priority set on the output of here and have a low priority feed that goes to these machines and a high priority feed that goes to the rest of the factory meaning that when we run out of oil because we will eventually this has gone this was at 9000 well, it was at, in fact it was at 4000 when we looked at it just before I started talking and it's now down to 2700 and something so we are definitely going to eventually run out of oil here so I need to tweak this system to make sure that it's um, it's going to carry on working and that's not going to be too hard so what all I need to do is put in a splitter here that prioritizes an output that goes into the rest the output that goes into the rest of the base down this belt and obviously cut this belt here to stop it uh, to separate them and then as a lower priority it has the one that goes along here to be turned into more and more and more and more and more hydrogen so yeah that's a um, that's a thing and I shall definitely be uh, def it's definitely gonna need some tweaking which I shall do in the next uh, in the next stream but I, I think I know what I need to do here to keep that going. Now what's also quite interesting here is the sheer number of belts I've got. Oh, look at the curve on that belt because it's so high up and it's going so far around the planet. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we've got, at the moment, we've got one, two, th one, two, three, four, five different belts all trying to go through quite a narrow space over here. And it is basically working because of the um, the 3D nonsensing that I'm doing. Um, so it does, it, it, it does all fit through here, and, and this is one of the nice things about Dyson Sphere Program versus Factorio, is that you can go in and start playing in the third dimension when you start to run out of space. So having this going, this is just a, a, a belt of stone that was originally going straight through the middle of here from a stone mine, and then when I rebuilt this area to require a bit more going on in here, so I think when I, I originally had just three um, oil refineries and then I put in another four and then I decided this area needed expanding and needed lots and lots of belts in here to get all the priorities right and that sort of thing. I was able to then just lift this up and have it go straight over the top of everything like this which is is quite satisfying and if I was absolutely desperate I could probably have it go even higher and go over the top of these um, these oil refineries. I haven't tried to find out what the um, uh, what the the, uh, the maximum height of a, of, of, of a, a, um, a belt is yet but it 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 seems to be pretty high. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, there we go. There's there's the max maximum height it can reach. But it is upgradable, so at the moment I can go this high. I don't even know how high that is. About eighty about eighteen high. 
um, and that's easily going to be high enough to go over any of the stuff stuff in my um, in my factory. Uh, so yeah, it the the three D ishness of this is incredibly powerful, and I'm probably going to have all kinds of fun with it. So I put that up there. As you can see, that's way above. Um, <laughs> Just going full roller coaster tycoon on making this, but um, yeah, it's it's way above everything else. There's, there's, there's loads and loads of room to play with this. Um, I'm not sure whether this is going, whether having that sort of level of height is going to actually be useful. Yes, it's great for getting over and around and about things, but none of, none of the machines are ever that high, so I don't know if it's going to be necessary because you can't put um, you can't put this you can't put machines in higher up, can you? No, this is. This is now. This is fixed at ground level. I can't. I can't raise that up and put it somewhere else. So, yeah, I don't know what the point of having belts that's quite that high is. Maybe it's just to allow you to do some truly phenomenal spaghetti. <laughs> we shall see. Okay, so that's the that's the oil processing um, as it as it is now. Um, it's a little bit spaghetti. Oh, uh, this this deserves an honourable mention, especially as it wasn't actually necessary. But over here, I wanted to get the stone down. To Okay, so yes, the stone is required over here for making glass because this is all cr a bit crammed in because I didn't realise how much I was going to expand at the time. So we're bringing the stone into here to make the glass and also sending stone out into the rest of the base. Now it came in quite high up, so I stacked up a couple of splitters here, had it come out of the side of this one, down and into the top of the other one, and then out at the bottom. Um, I believe that is, well... I believe that's required if you want to have have it go in as, to split one splitter and come out at the bottom of another splitter like that. I don't think I don't think the splitters feed stuff between them. Um, however, it is a nonsense because I could have just had this belt drop down a couple of levels and go into the side of go straight into the top of this splitter on the, over here. But that construction amused me a little bit, so I've left it in even though it's completely unnecessary. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what these sort of games are about, isn't it? Leaving things in, in, in slightly weird ways just because they amuse you. So, yes, yellow science, done. Um, oil processing, improved. Needs, needs a bit more improvement, but generally improved. So after that, I then started to work on the next the next important thing. Um, well, one of the important things I've done is boost up the amount of power I can fit in my mech, which means I can fly around for a bit longer before getting annoyed with it. But more importantly, I've had a look in the... Um, in the, in the researches, and I've got planetary logistics system and interstellar logistics system unlocked now. So I believe a planetary logistics system essentially put, you put in a space elevator, and then you have little spaceship robots that fly from the top of one to the top of another, taking resources around. So it's, it's for moving moving resources around on a single planet. The next step up from that is the interstellar logistics system, where I'm guessing this a little bit, but I think you then stick another you stick a space station on the top of your space elevator just stick it on top of it and then you have a bigger spaceship that can then fly between planets and as the name suggests it can also fly between stars but I think that's probably further on in my um, uh, learnings and researches. So this is going, going to be what allows me to start automating the transport of that titanium and the silicon from the other planet that I went to. So this, this will hopefully just sort of slot together. The thing is all of this requires quite a lot of exotic stuff. So if we have a look in here what do we need? Um, building so here we go. So for the planetary logistics system, we need steel, steel beams, which we've got, titanium, got that, processors, and weird purple things. The processors, there, there we go, processors, those require green circuits, which I've got, and electronic components, um, which require silicon um, and copper, which I've got. So, I brought in a supply of silicon from the other planet as well, in, in exactly the same way, that's just shoved in a box over here. Is it that box? I think it's that box. Yes, it is. Uh, well, it was that box. That box is now empty. But so I put it in, I put what I had in the box over there. It's been brought over here in this way. As you can see, we've got a belt full of silicon. That's being fed into the machine here that makes the electronic components. Uh, can land there. We go. Electronic components. The electronic components are being fed into this machine here that makes processors. And then we've got processors waiting on a belt here for me to then take them on to make them into. I've for, even forgotten what it was. No, it was the, these things, wasn't it? Yeah. So to make into the planetary logistics stations. The other thing was these weird purple things, particle containers. <clears throat> so that requires, jeez, um, that requires uh, electric motor, some sort, uh, electromagnetic turbine. That one, which which takes motors, these motors, electric motors, and coil and coils. Yes, yeah, so I've got both of those. So did I start? Have I started making them? No, I haven't. Haven't got around to making those yet. That's the sort of the next thing on the old to-do list. So. Uh, basically, along here, I'm gradually working towards making those um, interstellar, the um, interplanetary and the interstellar transport systems. But that's going to take a bit more expansion, should we say. 
<clears throat> as we've gone along here, it's the um, the way I've set this up is a bit a little bit silly, but the belts can go can quite happily go over water. Buildings can't, so and splitters count as buildings. So I've been having to put down these little areas of um, tile. So when you when you take um, a piece of foundation, you can put that anywhere you like, and you can build on it. And if you put it in water, then it it raises the ground level up. But as you can see, it's by by the the uh, tool tip there. It's, it it consumes a certain amount of your soil pile. At the moment, I've got 156,000 soil pile, which you get by basically by flattening um, hills. So as I've been going around and just building gen in general over for this whole thing over here, I've been accumulating all this soil. I don't know where the mech puts it, but I have been. And so if I go to here, for example, it takes it take 1,300 soil piles. So I build that, and it raises a bit of the ground up around there. I've now got a bit less soil pile. I accidentally built two, but never mind. And that and that allows you to then just pull the ground up to make an, make an air, make slightly bigger areas uh, that you can build in. And if you just put little dots of it in like this, then you can pull up reasonable amounts of land for each piece of the um, each piece of the foundation you use and foundation takes stone bricks and steel beams to make so there's a certain amount of resource required for that but the main the main worry of, of the cost here is that eventually I will probably run out of soil pile and then I don't know what I'll do then maybe I'll have to go out looking for hills like um, maybe over here somewhere I don't know yeah there, see, there you go as you can see now it says if I build it here I'll get almost 2,000 soil piles so if I put a piece down like that it pushes the ground down around it puts everything down to down to uh, ground down to sea level and I can just go along here and block 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 and that's re and, that, and then I'm reaccumulating my soil pile um, but again at the cost of some stone bricks and some um, and some steel for steel girders uh, so yeah I've got the potential to go around collecting it like that and as you can see I've now got more than I had when I started so I'm putting that bit down and, and using up some over here um, so it's not too much of a worry but it's it is a th it, it, it is a resource that is getting used up gra gradually and another resource that has to be managed. I think that covers pretty much all of what I've been doing recently actually. We've got, I mean there's been a lot more building of, along here I put a lot more buildings on the bus so I think I had the, um, over here we had the oil refineries last time but now I've got the splitters being made and the smelteries and is that chests? Yeah, storage containers and drills and um, uh, uh, foundations and oh diamonds no no diamonds are just being made there for being fed off over that way and uh, chemical plants and so on so it is just sort of gradually extending the bus and as I was doing all of this I discovered that I was running out of in I didn't have sufficient throughput of a lot of the things I was making so over here I've done quite a lot of improving and extending the um, the the the, uh, the 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 production of the intermediate resources. So if I if I start a research running, they're just so I've got something happening. Okay, here's another example. We've got using a thousand blue, five hundred red, and fifty fifty yellow. So we'll set that one going. If I come back out here, so now we've got I've got two machines making the green circuits because I'm getting through quite a lot of those. It's not factorio levels of green circuit consumption, but it's it's definitely more. Um, the coils are getting and I was getting uh, through the coils at a hell of a rate. So I've upgraded the number of machines making those, which meant I then needed to upgrade the number of machines making the the magnets. So over here, I've now split off um, the the magnets along here and the iron uh, iron plates along here to, to give me give it a lot more. A lot more throughput and a lot more ability to just to, to make lots of stuff, and that meant that I then didn't have enough iron ore coming in out of this this drill here and the one over there, or more likely the one the single belt wasn't providing enough throughput. The single belt that was coming out of here and trying to feed all of this wasn't providing enough throughput. So I put in an additional iron mine way over there on the over the horizon and some extra power generation as well. That's passing it in through here, and then in another example of the lovely 3Dness of this game. Um, I've got the ooh, I've got the belt coming through up here like like well like that, um, and that's providing easily enough for all all of my industry over here. So that's that's working well. But there have been a few places where I've had to, so far there've been these seem to be the only places where I've had to boost my um, production. Um, but I definitely had to make a lot more of these coils, a lot more circuits. Um, but yeah, this is now it's now going well. I have everything I need. I can I can science as fast as I want, and things seem to be going quite well. So next time, well. Next time, I'm going to start working on the uh, carry on rather working on the um, the interplanetary logistics system and the in, and the interstellar logistics systems. Um, get those built up and all of the resources for those. So I need to make these purple things first, which means I think I need to make these first. I haven't made them yet, but I do have both the prereqs for that. So once I've made the the turbines, I can make the I'll then have to make the uh, graphene, which comes from either carbon and oh sulfuric acid, okay, or from candy floss. So I don't think I can make candy floss. I think it's something you find. 
Um, and so I'm going to need to. So yeah, I'm going to need to make the sulfuric acid, which comes from oil. Is that stone and water? I think it is. O refined oil, stone and water. Okay. Well, I've got certainly two of those. I can. I, I know how to get water. Water is is, is easy. Uh, so I need to make so I need to put those together to make sulfuric, sulfuric acid. Combine that with the carbon to get uh, graphene, and then combine that with the um, turbines and some and some copper in order to get the uh, particle containers. Whew! That's quite a lot of stuff to do in order to get this working. This is going to this is going to be a big job next time. But it's not. Too, I don't think it's going to be too difficult. It's just going to be a case of plugging through all of the things that are required and hopefully getting getting the uh, the correct thing out at the end. My other concern, as I was saying earlier, is how much of this oil I've got left now. So, uh, swing around. Okay, so there's still still 1,300 in this um, in this storage tank, and then there's another 20 in the ones underneath. So, I've got a while before I start to have problems with that, but it is eventually going to be a problem. So, I need to, as I say, I, I, but I know how I'm going to solve that one. So that's not too bad. Okay, so that will be um, Wednesday. Tomorrow, by the time you're seeing this video, probably, I shall be coming in and, and attempting to, to fix all of these problems um, that were specifically around here, and then just extending the, extending the factory further over the horizon that way. So, lots to do. Um, you say, come along and join me half, half past seven UK time um, in, on, on Wednesdays, and then also come along on uh, Mondays for the Factorio Space Exploration Stream, where we do it. At the moment, we are. Oh, what have we done recently? We've. Um, got the core processing up and running we've been messing around with trains I can't really remember what we're doing I've been doing I suggest you check out the video because that will go into uh, into lots and lots of details about it all <laughs> uh, so yes those those will be uh, coming out on Mondays and Wednesdays there'll be the catch-up videos on at the weekend as usual so lots to see there um, there may be some other videos I've done a couple of kayaking videos recently so I'll probably be trying try to squeeze those out when there's um, when there's gaps in the schedule um, and at some point I would like to make some more GTA videos we've got about three people who are in theory making them but none of us seem to have any time which is a bit problematic but we'll try and get them done I hope you're um, I hope you're not missing them too much what's the oh is this, is this iron ore yes this is iron ore coming from the other other, smell, other mine okay um, Yes, yeah, so we've got those theoretically coming out, and who knows, there'll probably be some other stuff as well. So keep an eye, keeping a good eye on the channel, make sure you're subscribed, and um, I'll see you in the next one. And also, don't forget to check out our channel sponsor. If you go to trefoil.be slash lawrenceplays, then you can uh, sign then you get um, you can sign up for a, a Factorio or a Minecraft server through them, and you get 20% off your first order if you use the, uh, the code lawrenceplays when you check out. So, yeah, check them out and see, see, see if they've got what you need. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.